Hello. Hi, Archie. Okay, this is called Take Two. We started reading today and then you thankfully reminded me that I forgot to hit the record button. So we are going to try this again. Let me go ahead and share my screen with you. So this is where we came to yesterday in the story. And after we finished yesterday, I thought it would be fun to try to find some pictures for us of what it might have looked like when Jack and Annie were taking their first ride on that big white deer, the stag. So let's go back a few pages and take a look at that. Now this chapter that we read yesterday was called A White Comet. <laughs> oh, Archie, Archie, Archie. <laughs> Now, let me remember what I just said. Okay, <laughs> this is called Take Three. The chapter we were reading yesterday was called A White Comet. So we did, we did look at some pictures here of what a comet looks like. We also learned that the gift from the Christmas night was a red velvet cloak. And here's a picture of what a red velvet cloak might look like. A cloak does not usually have sleeves for us to put our hands, our whole arm into. It will go over our shoulders and maybe there will be a hole for us to stick our hands through. And usually there is a hood for us to put over our head and it will usually go all the way down to the, to the ground. Here is a picture of a young lady wearing a cloak. And you can see that there is a hole in the fabric for her hands to stick through. We also learned yesterday that it was so cold outside that puffs of frosty air blew from the stag's nostrils. Your nostrils are those two holes in your nose. And when you are breathing, the air that you breathe out can either come out of your mouth or it can come out of your nose. Here is a picture showing a girl who is breathing out of her mouth outside on a very cold day. We know it is cold because it is snowing. Well, actually the air in her body is warm because inside our body it is warm. 37 degrees Celsius, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. But outside, it is super cold. If it is snowing, then maybe it is zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And so the warm air coming out of her mouth is going to, um, we will be able to see it in the cold air outside of her body. So this is her warm air coming out. So on really cold days, you can see the air that someone is breathing out. Now look at all of the pictures that I found for this page that we read yesterday. This was a really fun page to read because this is when Jack and Annie got onto the stag for the first time and they got to have their first ride. And this stag was amazing. It was so fast. It was like a comet. It was just a blur. It was so fast. Faster than galloping on a horse. If we think about all of the things that they saw and that they went by or over or through, we can have a really good idea or a picture in our mind of what it looked like there in Camelot or as they were traveling from Camelot to the other world we can get a better picture in our mind of the setting. So let's take a look at this. As they were traveling, they dashed across a frost covered field, jumped over hedgerows and stone walls and bounded across icy streams. So the verbs that she's using are dashed, that's moving quickly, jumped, bounded. So frost covered field, hedgerows, 
stone walls and icy streams. Let's take a look at some of those pictures. This here would show a field with frost on it. This right here is a row of hedges called a hedgerow. And it is in the winter time, so it is frozen. This is another picture of a hedgerow, hedgerow. So the stag is jumping over this. That's, that's pretty amazing. This also shows an icy field covered in frost with a hedgerow. Here is a stone wall. This is looking at a frost covered field with a stone wall. Here is an icy stream. A stream is just a little bit of water and you can see the snow on both sides of it and the water is starting to freeze in some places. This is a painting of an icy stream going here through the woods. Now a meadow, we will see the word meadow. I know how it's a meadow. So this is a meadow not in the winter time, but in the summertime. And often in the summertime, in the spring and summer, the wild flowers will be so beautiful. Here are wild flowers in this meadow and wild flowers in this meadow. So they went by flocks of sheep and herds of goats in the meadows. They, the stag ran past thatch, thatched huts and quiet stables. Let's look at what a thatched hut is. This is a picture of a thatched hut. The word thatched is really referring to how they are making the roof. So here you can see how they are making the roof of this hut. This is called a thatched hut. And this is a stable. A stable is where a horse will live. Here is another picture of a stable that might have been where horses were staying. We just looked at meadows, thatched huts, quiet stables. The stag ran on and on through the starry night. We're also going to see a cloud covered mountain range in the distance, craggy mountains. And we're going to look at a rocky slope. So let's look at those. A starry night. Right here is a starry night. Isn't that amazing? Look at how many stars. Wow. It's really fun to be able to see that many stars in the night sky. Looking at a mountain range in the distance, this is a good picture because here is where this is closest to us. And this is a little further away and a little further away and farther away and even farther away. So these mountains back here are way far away in the distance. We would call these craggy mountains, craggy rocks. It's because it's so jagged, the edge of the rock. It's not smooth, very jagged up and down. We call that craggy. And a rocky slope, here would be a rocky slope. A slope means you're going up or you're going down. That's a slope. If you're, if you're going up a rocky slope, then you need to climb on a lot of rocks. Here's another picture of a rocky slope. And here is a boy, an illustration of a boy who is climbing up a rocky slope. The stag finally came to a halt on the ledge of a steep cliff. So we're going to look at a steep cliff. A cliff, this is a steep cliff. This is not on the top of it. This, is, this shows someone who is mountain climbing up the side of the steep cliff. Here's another picture of a steep cliff. So the stag came to a stop at the top 
of a steep cliff. Let's see. I wanted to show you the word wistfully. We talked about that yesterday. And so here are some definitions of the word wistfully. Wistful is when you are feeling a little sad because you are thinking about something that is impossible or in the past and you can't have it in the present, it's gone. So it's not possible or it's all gone. And you feel a little sad about that, it's a wistful feeling. This one was an interesting definition. It said, only one letter separates the two words wistful and wishful. But wishful is having hope for something and wistful is having sadness or melancholy. Melancholy is when you feel sad about something. Here it says someone who is wistful is rather sad because they want something and they know that they cannot have it. So it's a little bit of a sad feeling and at the same time that you're feeling sad, it's, it's because you're thinking about something either that already happened and it, it can't happen anymore or something that you want, but you can't have it, something that's not possible. So there's some thinking that goes with that sadness. This young lady is showing an expression of feeling wistful. And this boy, is another expression of he might be feeling wistful. And one more would be this girl right here. She might be feeling wistful as she looks out the window. Okay. Uh, we also, we, they came to the iron gate. And so I wanted to show you uh, some examples of an iron gate. That would be a gate that is made out of iron. So here are some examples of what an iron gate might look like. So you can see this is made out of iron. So it is very strong. Okay, our la the last pictures I wanted to show you were fog and mist, because they talked about how the mountain range was covered with clouds. And here it says that Annie stared into the mist. So mist and fog would look something like this. You can see here that up here the sky is blue, but down here around the bridge, there are all these clouds that are close to the ground. We call that fog, fog. Here's another example of fog. So this, the clouds are close to the ground, Above the fog, there might be blue sky, but down close to the ground, it is a lot of clouds and it's hard to see. So even the truck, the truck has his lights on. This is called fog. Sometimes we will see in the mountains, this fog that's low to the ground. And we might call that mist. It's kind of, it almost looks like um, the mountaintops are coming up out of a sea of mist. It's kind of a really cool picture, I think, to look at it and to see how those, these tops of these mountains right here, it's like they're rising up out of a sea, but the sea are just clouds. They're called mist. Again, isn't this kind of a pretty picture? You can see the tops of the trees that are just poking out through the top of the mist. It's fun if you go camping or hiking and you wake up in the morning, early in the morning, when there is still mist covering the ground and the mountain tops and the tops of the trees are just poking there, poking up through that. It's kind of eerie would be the word I might use but it's also very pretty. It's fun for people who like to take photographs. So this gives us a little bit of an idea of what it might look for them, of what it might look like for them when they are 
traveling on the back of the stag very, very fast on their way to that iron gate. Oh, there was one other, there's one other uh, expression I wanted to talk about. The author of Magic Treehouse likes to have Jack say, oh man, and also, oh brother. And I wanted to explain the difference between these two things. Oh man, what does oh man mean? It's used to express excitement or, enth or enthusiasm. When we are excited about something, we can say, oh man, oh man, this is so exciting, wow. So it's a way of saying, wow, oh my goodness, wow. This is so great, this is so exciting. I am just, I don't even know what to say. When we finished here, Jack said, oh brother. Now, oh brother has a little bit of a different meaning. Oh brother is used as an expression of frustration, disgust, disbelief. This word comes from, incredulous. Incredulous means, I just can't believe it. You know, this might look like a really hard word, but if you learn that C-R-E-D has to do with belief, or if, that you believe something, you can believe it's true. And then if you learn that in is a prefix, which means not, then incredulous means, I just can't believe it. I just can't believe it's true. So when we say, oh brother, we might say it because we're frustrated, but we also might say it because we just can't believe it. That's what disbelief means. This word disbelief is like incredulous. And the prefix dis means not. So that means you don't believe it. So let's see where Jack said it. Annie thought that putting on the cloak would let them become invisible. And Jack, he was just wearing the cloak and he wasn't invisible. So he thinks that he thinks that is a crazy idea. He just doesn't believe it. He's like, oh brother. When we say, oh brother, we might also roll our eyes. Rolling our eyes is when we just we actually do, we, we let our eyes roll up to the ceiling and back around again, like in a circle. And it's our way of showing, I don't believe it. That's a crazy idea. I think Jack also said, yeah, right here he said, that's nuts. That's another way of saying, that's crazy. I just don't believe it. So he rolled his eyes, he said, oh brother. He said, that's nuts. He thinks Annie's idea of the cloak making them invisible is just a silly idea. And so she tries the cloak on and Jack says, yes, Annie, I can see you. So we're going to pick up here. Jack looked back at the gate. Now remember, sometimes when an author is using italics, especially when they are several sentences, it is just something the character is thinking, not something they're saying out loud. So Annie does not hear him thinking this. This is just what Jack is thinking in his head and we, the reader, get to find out. Now he is not thinking these words, he wondered, <laughs> right? Those, those words are not in italics. <laughs> He's thinking, even if we get past the guards, what then? The other world swallowed up Camelot's best knights. King Arthur said it was filled with magic and monsters. I think Jack is pretty nervous. But now someone is speaking, and so that would be Annie, and she said, 
Jack, look at me now. Jack turned to Annie. He wasn't there. Where are you? He said, staring at the darkness. Cool. It works. Who says this? <laughs> Annie, she's invisible. Jack says, where are you? Jack said again, turning around. Here. Who said this? Annie. That's right. Jack felt a hand touch his face. <laughs> kind of, he's kind of, ooh. Uh, ah, he said, jumping back. It's me. I'm invisible. I pulled the hood over my head. That's the trick, she said. That's the trick. Pulled the hood over my head. Jack felt a chill run down his spine. That's just what I was thinking. I was like, oh, I'm like, I feel like a chill just ran down my spine. This is the, the um, figurative language. Oh man, he whispered, watch, I'm going to take the hood off. In a flash, Annie was back. It feels creepy to be invisible, she said. That was, that was another word I was thinking of. I was thinking that it seemed creepy. Jack was speechless. Speechless means he didn't know what to say. The magic only happened when you wear the hood, said Annie. Annie. Yeah, I have to get all, all the words on the page here. Good trick, huh? Uh, yeah, said Jack. He shook his head. This is just too weird. Don't worry about it being weird. It's a great way to get past the guards, said Annie. Plus, it's a way to hide in the other world. We don't know what we'll find we don't know what we'll find there, right? Yeah, right, said Jack. Okay, good, said Annie. Now, stand beside me and don't move. Jack put away his notebook. Annie threw the velvet cloak over his shoulders and backpack. Great, it's big enough for both of us, she said. She carefully arranged the folds around them. Then she pulled the huge hood, the huge hood over both their heads. Ooh, that's pretty cool. That's really neat. Jack looked down. He couldn't see his body at all. He felt like he couldn't breathe. In a panic, he threw off the hood. I hate that, he said. <gasps> I told you it's creepy, said Annie. But if we don't wear it, we won't get past the guards. Yeah, I know. And we won't have protection in the other world, said Jack. He took a deep breath. Okay, let's do it. Annie pulled the hood up again. I'll hold on to the hood so it won't blow off, she said. You just think about getting across that bridge, nothing else. But I can't see my feet, said Jack. You know, I, I think I'm with Jack. I would worry about that. Sometimes when I'm walking, especially on a bridge, I want to be able to see my feet. Annie said, you don't need to see your feet to walk, said Annie. Come on, do it for Morgan. What does that mean, do it for Morgan? What does Morgan have to do with this? Oh, it's their need to help Morgan. That's right. And one of the reasons they're going on this quest is just to help Morgan. So they really need to be successful at this quest. They need to get past the guards. And here they have this amazing magical cloak that will let them be invisible. So. Poor Jack, he's nervous, he's, he doesn't really like it, he can't see his feet, he's maybe a little scared. And Annie is saying, do it for Morgan, think about her. We are doing this quest to help her. 
so we can be brave. He and Danny stepped onto the bridge. Whatever you do, don't look down, said Annie. You know, I hate it when people say that. As soon as someone says, whatever you do, don't look down, what's the first thing we want to do? Look down. Look down. <laughs> As they started over the bridge, the wind whistled around them. Jack couldn't help it. He looked down. Ah, not only was his body missing, but the fog beneath the bridge was moving in a wild spinning whirl. That's really creepy. Jack felt dizzy and faint. He stopped. Keep going, whispered Annie. Jack took a deep breath and looked straight ahead. Then he started walking again. He went slowly, step by step, toward the pale light beyond the bars of the gate. In the flickering torchlight, the guards looked like giants. As Jack and Annie slipped invisibly by them, Jack held his breath. How will we open the gate? He wondered. Remember, wondered and the italics tell us that he's just thinking this in his head. Whoosh, said Annie loudly, loudly. Jack's heart nearly stopped. Had <laughs> lost her mind? What are you doing? He whispered. I'm the wind, Annie whispered back. Whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is kind of an exciting place to have to stop, but ah, oh, I can't wait until tomorrow. I just wish we could keep reading and reading and reading. All right. What color star do you want, Archie? Blue, like red. All righty. So I'm going to hit the stop share Whoosh. button. And then I'm going to say, so long. <laughs> You're looking it up in your own book, aren't you? <laughs> you can't wait until tomorrow either. <laughs> I'm going to say so long, Archie. So long. Cheddar chip. Bye. Uh.